Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Worship with Deer Lake United Methodist Church Kids. I am Barbara Wetherill, one of your children's ministry leaders. We are in a series called What God Wants. So far we have learned God wants all people to worship Him, and God wants our worship to be genuine. Today we are learning God wants us to encourage each other. I hope you have your Bibles ready. If not, now is a good time to pause this video, go grab a Bible. You can even grab some pieces of paper and a pencil if you like, so that you can join me in some of the demonstrations I do today. So go ahead and pause, and when you're ready, come on back. The scriptures we are studying today are mostly in the book of Acts from the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, the fifth book in the New Testament. We're also going to be studying 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. You can get those books ready in your Bible right now. Put your finger in it or a bookmark or a pencil. And when you see the verses pop up on the screen, pause the video while you turn to the correct chapter and verse. And then you can hit play again while the verses are being read. Let's find out more about the church that began at Pentecost. One member of that church was known by the code name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Does that sound familiar to you? I hope so. We've heard about Barnabas before. Our assignment is to discover the man behind the code name. Acts chapter four, verses 32 through 37. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them, because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. For instance, there was Joseph, one of the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. Acts 4, 32-37 Acts chapter 9, verses 26 and 27. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. Then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. Acts 9, 26 and 27. Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 24. Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. They preached the word of God, but only to Jews. However, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene began preaching to the Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. The power of the Lord was with them, and a large number of these Gentiles believed and turned to the Lord. When the church at Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw this evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. Acts eleven nineteen through 24 So what have we learned so far about the early church and Barnabas from the book of Acts? In Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37, we learn that they shared everything. Barnabas even sold land and gave the prophets, the money from that land, to the apostles. In Acts chapter 9, verses 26 through 27, we learned Barnabas accepted Paul. 
and he told the disciples about Saul's teaching about Jesus. In Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 24, we learned that Barnabas encouraged a new church to keep following Jesus. How can we encourage others to follow Jesus? We can invite them to join us at church or a church gathering. We can be helpful and friendly. We can share with others. God wants us to encourage each other. Say it with me. God wants us to encourage each other. When we encourage others, as Barnabas did, we help others. We help them try harder, have hope, be stronger, braver, and accomplish more. We also show them that the people who believe in Jesus are encouragers. Encouraging others is part of being a Christian. God wants us to encourage each other. We've been learning about the early days of the church. Now we're going to learn about the encouraging things that early church members did together as they began to meet. Let's read Acts chapter 2 verses 41 through 47. Acts chapter 2 verses 41 through 47. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Acts 2, 41 through 47. We use the word fellowship to describe Christians meeting together. Sometimes we share fellowship by worshiping or learning about God together. Other times we share fellowship just by talking to each other or eating together. Fellowship is a great way to be encouraged and encourage others, and it's an important part of belonging to the body of Christ. The early church shared fellowship by learning, sharing meals, and praying together. Right now, our fellowship is mostly online, over the phone, or through letters, but it's important to remember that when we get the chance to be together again, we need to do that. When we meet together, we're sharing fellowship just like the early believers did. And it's how we grow together in our knowledge and love of God. So I cannot wait until I can fellowship with you all again at church. God wants us to encourage each other. God wants us to encourage each other. The early believers encouraged each other by gathering for fellowship. They shared food and everything they had with each other. This pleased God, and every day he added to their group with more believers. When we're friendly and encouraging at church, others will want to join our fellowship too. Let's explore how we can encourage others. Let's pretend this sad face is one of our friends. Our friend is feeling pretty discouraged about something. What do you think they might be discouraged about? Are you feeling like our friend here? Let's see what happens when we encourage our friend versus when we are not encouraging. So our friend is already having a rough time. Um, and maybe when they get up in the morning, they stub their toe. So now they're even more sad. And 
then they go to have breakfast and their favorite cereal only had one piece in it. And so they didn't get to have their favorite cereal. And then they forget their lunchbox at home on the way to school. Or if they're not going to school right now because of a virus, they're sad because they don't get to have lunch with their friends. And then maybe Maybe an assignment they've been working on goes missing. And maybe they get in an argument with a brother or sister. And then maybe, maybe they have to do some chores that they don't want to do. And maybe they hear some mean words throughout the day. All those mean words, all of those frustrations that we go throughout the day, maybe even the fact that it wasn't sunny and they couldn't go outside to play. Some worry lines up there. Whether other people's words and actions and situations that are out of our control can make our friends feel like this, can make us feel like this. But what happens when we offer encouragement? What happens? Let's find out. When we tell someone that Jesus loves them, when we tell them that will help them find the missing assignment. When we tell them that the mean words that they heard were not true, that God knows the truth and God thinks that they are perfectly, wonderfully made and God cares for them. You can tell them God loves them many, many times in many different ways. You can tell them that you love them. You can come up with fun activities to do inside when it's raining. You can share a, ideas for a good book or a good game that you know. Maybe you can help them find that other box of cereal that's been in the pantry the whole time, but they just didn't see it. And maybe you know a very special way to talk to your friend, something that will just brighten their day. You know that special thing that your friend wants to hear that is true. When we encourage each other, we not only erase some of the worries and the tears and frustrations, we can add joy back into others' lives with our encouragement. And we point others to the love of Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 So what do these verses say about Jesus? He loves us, comforts us, gives us hope and strength. And not just any kind, the eternal kind. Jesus is the ultimate encourager because he brings us hope and of eternal life. When we believe in Jesus, he'll be our best friend on earth, and then we can live with him forever in heaven. That's the most encouraging news ever. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. 
Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing. That's a great word from God. God wants us to encourage each other. When we encourage each other, we can wipe the frowns off our friends' faces and replace those frowns with smiles, just like we did here. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you have created and all that you have done. Thank you for encouraging us when we need it most, you are there and you give us hope, strength, comfort, peace, and you have given us eternal life with you if we only believe. Teach us more each day how to follow you and how to be encouragers to those around us so they can see you also and want to follow you. We pray for anyone who needs healing or help right now, Lord, encouragement. Pray for each desire on our hearts, because you know them and you know exactly what to do. Thank you that we can take all of our cares to you and that you love us. Pray that you'll be with each person who is watching this and praying with me. Pray that we can be in fellowship together in person very soon. We pray all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.